Introduction Solar System is full of interesting objects and new surprises are discovered every day by many astronomic agencies and institutes. Solar wind is one of many amazing objects related to solar system. Solar wind is a stream containing charged particles. It flows outwards from the sun. With its flow, it leaves behind a bubble-like region in interstellar medium. This region is referred as heliosphere. The flow of solar wind faces a point at which both interstellar and solar wind possesses same pressure. This point falls usually at the edge of scattered disks. If we go further than this, there comes the Oort cloud. It is possible the source of long-period comets. Its distance is yet to be figured out. It is possible that it may be located thousands times further than where Heliosphere is located. Our galaxy, in which our solar system is located, is named Milky Way. In Milky Way, our solar system is located in Orion Arm, that is, 26,000 light-years from center point of our galaxy. One light-year is equal to the distance which light ray can cross in a year. There are no significant historical studies or documentation related to the concept of solar system can be found since most people of late Middle Age believed that Earth was the centre of entire universe. In that era, Earth was considered being divinely different from any other object that travelled through the sky. In the 17th century, a proper understanding of physics was established thanks to the contributions of Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kelper and Isaac Newton. This understanding helped us to understand that Earth is actually moving around the Sun and all other planets are doing the same thing. Further, planets and their moons were discovered with the development of telescopes. Geological phenomena such as mountains, craters and meteorological phenomena such as clouds, storms and ice caps were made eligible for being investigated by the development of unnamed spacecraft and advanced telescopes. This book will give you about an idea of what solar system is all about and cover basic details of all important objects of solar system. If one wants to follow detailed study of solar system, this book is great for getting a breakthrough in such a large and expanding term. Chapter 1. Structure and Composition In our solar system, Sun is a principal component. Sun is a G2 main sequence star. It contains 99% of known mass in the solar system. Gravitational force of the solar system is completely dominated by the Sun. The remaining mass of the system is stored in largest orbiting bodies of Sun. 90% of this remaining mass is contained in Jupiter and Saturn alone. All other objects containing terrestrial planets, dwarf planets, moons, comets, asteroids are together made with remaining 0.002% of solar system mass. Plane of Earth's orbit is known as ecliptic. Most of the large objects in Sun's orbit are located near this ecliptic. Main planets are very close to ecliptic. On the other hand, a frequent and significant greater angle to ecliptic is possessed by comets and various Kuiper belt objects. If Sun's rotation is observed from North Pole, it tends to rotate counterclockwise. All planets and most objects orbit the Sun in this very same direction. However, there are some exceptions too. Halley's Comet is a great example for such exceptions. Overall structure of the solar system is made of following regions and objects. Note that order of this list is based on the location of these sectors, starting from Sun. Sun, inner planets or small planets or terrestrial planets. Rocky asteroid belt. Outer planets or giant planets or gas giants. Kuiper belt that contains ice objects mostly. The structure is often divided into separate regions informally by many astronomers. Inner solar system consists of four terrestrial planets and the rocky asteroid belt. The outer solar system start beyond the asteroids. It includes remaining four gas planets only.
Kuiper Belt and other outermost parts are considered the members of distinct region that start beyond the orbit of Neptune. A secondary gravity system of own is possessed by almost every planet in the solar system. All these planets are being orbited by planetary objects. We know these objects as moons or natural satellites. The outer giant planets even possess planetary rings that is formed with tiny objects orbiting the planets as unions. Most of the largest moons rotate synchronously. Their one face is permanently turned toward their parent. Orbits of objects related to Sun are described in laws of planetary motion developed by Kepler. According to these laws, each object travels along an ellipse with the Sun maintaining the same focus. Objects that are located closer to the Sun travel more quickly. Also, their semi-major axes are much smaller compared to farther objects from the Sun. They travel faster since they are most affected by the gravity of the Sun. Objects' distance from the Sun changes over the course of its year on the elliptical orbit. When it achieves the closest distance, it is called perihelion. On the other hand, most distant point is called aphelion. Main eight planets have almost circular orbit. However, many comets, asteroids and Kuiper Belt objects possess highly elliptical orbits. Thanks to the years of studies and observations, numerical models have been developed that can predict position of specific objects within the solar system. Despite of dominating almost 99% of system's mass, Sun roughly accounts 2% when it comes to angular momentum. Most of the angular momentum is accounted by the planets thanks to their combined mass, orbit and distance from the Sun. In this matter, Jupiter dominates all due to its gigantic mass and size. Comets also have significant contribution in the matter. The Sun encompasses almost all the matter of solar system. It is made of 98% hydrogen and helium. As described above, the remaining matter is encompassed in Jupiter and Saturn. These two are also made using hydrogen and helium as primary elements. Heat and light pressure generated from Sun resulted as a composition gradient into solar system. According to this composition, closer objects to the Sun that are affected more by light and heat are formed with elements that have noticeably high melting point. It is same for farther objects. Objects far away from Sun largely contain materials that have lower melting points. A boundary is defined in the solar system behind which such volatile substances can condense. This boundary is known as frost line. Its line lies around 5 AU from the Sun itself. Objects that are located in center sector or part of the solar system are commonly formed by rocks and metals. These elements hold a high melting point, such as silicates, iron, nickel, etc. These elements remain solid throughout any conditions in protoplanetary nebula. Jupiter and Saturn are known as gas giants since they are formed from gases. These planets are formed of materials with significantly low melting point, such as hydrogen, helium, neon, etc. All these elements have high vapour pressure and were often in the gaseous phase during nebula. Ice elements such as water, ammonia, methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide tend to have melting points up to a few kelvins. They can be found in various places in the solar system, in the form of gases, liquid or even ices. However, they were probably in solid or gaseous phase in nebula majority of the satellites of the giant planets and ice giants are comprised by icy substances. Gases and ices are altogether referred as volatiles. Chapter 2 Formation and Evolution As described before, gravitational collapse of a large molecular cloud caused the formation of solar system around 4,568 billion years ago. Some modern theorists refer to this term as Big Bang also. This molecular cloud was possible several light years across from current location of the solar systems. 
It is also believed that it birthed many other stars too, along with Sun itself. This molecular cloud mainly contained helium and hydrogen. There were also a small amount of heavy elements that were fused by previous generation stars. It was known as pre-solar nebula before the gravitational collapse. Eventually, angular momentum conservation was triggered that caused it to rotate comparatively faster than past. Due to the increased speed, most of the mass was gathered at the centre. It caused the centre of the cloud to become much hotter than the surrounding disk. It eventually became a fast-rotating disk. Its diameter is predicted to be around 200 AU. The mass at the centre has become a dense protostar. Accretion within the disk formed many small planets. Dust and gases of these planets attracted each other with gravitational forces and eventually formed even larger bodies. In the beginning of such process, there were hundreds of pro-planets. Many of them were merged into main eight planets and other large bodies. Rest got destroyed and turned into dwarf planets and small dust particles and minor bodies. Warm inner solar system was really close to the sun. Metals and silicates managed to exist in solid form thanks to their higher boiling point. These metals and silicate eventually formed the rocky planets that we now know as Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These terrestrial planets could not grow gigantic since only a small fraction of solar nebula was comprised by metallic elements that formed these planets. The remaining giant planets, including Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Jupiter, were formed further behind the frost line. As described before, frost line is a point located between orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Beyond this frost line, material is cool enough to let icy components remain in their solid forms. The ices that formed outer planets were plentiful compared to metallic elements that formed inner planets. It allowed outer planets to attain massive size by allowing them to capture massive amount of hydrogen, helium and most abandoned, lightest elements as well. Asteroid Belt Whipper Belt and Oort Cloud were formed due to remaining components after a large bodies, including planets, were formed completely. NICE model is a complete explanation of this sequence of processes. It describes how various regions of solar systems were formed. NICE model also describes how outer planets were formed at different locations. As a result of constant gravitational interactions, these planets were migrated in their current respective orbits. All these processes were not as short as they are to read. It took countless years to form final stage of solar system. The pressure and density of hydrogen in the centre of the protostar kept increasing for around 50 million years and became high enough in order to trigger a thermonuclear fusion. The temperature... Reaction ratio, pressure and density kept increasing and eventually hydrostatic equilibrium was achieved. In this process, gravitational force was equal. Gravitational force was equaled by thermal pressure. This process caused Sun to become a main sequence star. It has been predicted that main sequence phase of Sun will last for about 10 million years, when compared to around 2 billion years for any other form of the Sun's pre-remnant life. Planetary formation process ended as heliosphere was created by Sun that caused remaining gases and particles to leave the protoplanetary disk and merge into interstellar space. The Sun is growing brighter constantly. As for predictions, its brightness was about 70% of present brightness compared to its brightness in beginning period of main sequence form. Until the hydrogen in the core of the Sun is completely converted to helium, the solar system will remain the same. It is predicted that this would possibly happen 5 billion years from now. It would end the main sequence life of the Sun. The core of the Sun will eventually collapse. The energy output of such process would be much greater than before. The Sun will enter the red giant phase as soon as its outer layers will expand up to a diameter 260 times greater than present size. As a result of this fast expanding process, Sun will be comparatively cooler than current situation. The lowest possible temperature of Sun is predicted 2600 K.
the expanding sun would possibly vaporize the closest Mercury and Venus. Since the habitable zone moves out to orbit to Mars, Earth would be rendered uninhabitable. In a very short period of time after expanding, new core of the Sun would be hot enough to burn helium in helium fusion. Sun will start burning the helium as soon as it completely runs out of helium. Nuclear reactions taking place in the core will dwindle since Sun is too small to commence the fusion of heavy elements. As a result, the outer layers of the Sun would move away from the main body and into the space. These outer layers would leave a white dwarf behind. White dwarf will be an extraordinarily dense object that will hold half the original mass of the Sun. However, its size is predicted to be equal to Earth only. Planetary nebula would be formed by outer layers that are ejected into the space. There, planetary nebula would return some of the material that were responsible for forming the Sun itself. However, they will not be in pure form. They will be enriched with presence of heavier elements such as carbon and many interstellar medium as well. Chapter 3 The Sun and Interplanetary Medium Sun Being the centre and the star of the solar system, Sun is the largest or most massive object in solar system. Compared to Earth's mass, Sun is about 332,900 times larger. The Sun is large enough to support high temperature and densities in its core in order to sustain a nuclear fusion of basic elements that are hydrogen and helium. This is why it is known as Main Sequence Star. Nuclear reactions taking place inside the core of the Sun release a supreme amount of energy. This energy is mostly radiated into space in the form of electromagnetic energy. They are visible in the form of light. Sun is a main sequence star of G2 type. Hotter main sequence stars tend to be more luminous compared to others from the same category. However, Sun does not belong to any category since the temperature of Sun is intermediate between hottest stars and the coldest stars. It is very hard to find a Sun brighter and hotter than Sun, being them very rare. Dimmer and cooler stars are referred as red dwarfs. Red dwarfs are said to make up 85% of start of the entire Milky Way galaxy. Sun also falls in the category of Population 1 stars. Population 1 stars are said to have more abundance of heavier elements compared to hydrogen and helium. Mostly these elements are metals in astronomical parlance. Mass of Population 1 star is predicted to be heavier compared to older Population 2 stars. Elements that are heavier than helium and hydrogen are formed through the explosion of ancient and exploding stars in their core. The first generation stars were dead until the universe was enriched enough with these elements and atoms of these elements. These facts are proved since most of oldest stars contain few elements only when compared to newly born stars that have more elements. Such metal atoms are proven to have important role in the formation of Sun and planetary system as well since planets are formed from accretion of metals. Interplanetary medium Interplanetary medium that is a near vacuum that is present and vast majority parts of solar system. Stream of charged particles known as solar wind in the form of plasma is consistently radiated from Sun just similar to light. This stream of charged particles is spread far away about 1.5 million kilometre. Here, it is noticeable that this is the rate per hour. This stream generates a tenuous atmosphere. Such atmosphere permeates the interplanetary medium out to at 100 AU. Activities such as solar flares and coronal mass ejections occur on the surface of the Sun, which disturbs the heliosphere. Space, weather and geomagnetic storms are a result of such disturbance. Heliospheric current sheet is considered the largest structure located within the heliospheric area. It is a spiral form. It is generated through magnetic field rotation that takes place within interplanetary medium as a result of rotating actions of Sun itself. Magnetic field of Earth acts as a protector of Earth's atmosphere. It protects atmosphere from effects of solar wind. 
atmospheres of Mars and Venus are constantly flowing away into the space as an effect of solar wind since any of them do not have magnetic fields. Magnetic field and massive quantities of materials are constantly blown through Sun's outer surface as a result of coronal mass ejections and similar activities to that. These magnetic fields and materials interact with Earth's magnetic fields and particles in the upper atmosphere of the Earth. Famous auroras can be seen near magnetic poles as a result of such interaction. Solar system stays protected from high-energy interstellar particles thanks to the heliosphere and planetary magnetic fields possessed by some planets. These interstellar particles are known as cosmic rays. Through observations, it has been noticed that the strength of magnetic fields of the Sun and density of cosmic rays in interstellar medium are changed on a noticeably long time scales. Thus, it is certain that cosmic ray penetration within the solar system varies. However, due to a very long time scale, it is possibly impossible to figure out the level or value of such changes. Minimum two disc-like populations, or say sectors of cosmic dust, are located within the interplanetary medium. There could be more. Zodiacal light is caused by one of these regions, known as zodiacal dust cloud. Zodiacal dust cloud is located in the inner solar system. Gravitational interactions within the planets cause collisions within asteroid belt. Zodiacal dust cloud is possibly an output of such collisions of asteroid belt. Second dust cloud is located at the far end of the solar system near Kuiper belt. It possibly extends about 10 AU to 40 AU. It is also said to be created with very same collisions that took place within the Kuiper belt. Chapter 4 Inner Solar System As described before, Terrestrial planets and asteroid belt are contained in the region of inner solar system. Most of the objects of inner solar system are composed of silicates, are metals, as main components. These objects are noticeably close to the Sun. Radius of entire inner solar system is roughly less than distance between orbits of gas, giants, Jupiter and Saturn. Inner solar system lies within the frost line. Frost line is somewhere about 5 AU or say about 700 million km from the Sun. Inner planets Inner planets, also known as four terrestrial planets, possess dense and rocky compositions. There are few to no moon related with these planets. None of the inner planets have rings surrounding them. Refractory minerals are main component in the compositions of these planets. Crusts and mantles of these planets are formed of silica mainly. Metals such as iron and nickel are main elements of their core. Venus, Earth and Mars possesses enough substantial atmospheres that are required to generate and support weather. All of these three planets have impact craters, tectonic surface features such as rift valleys and volcanoes. Inferior planets are a category of inner planets that contains planet that is close to Sun more than the Earth. Two of the inner planets fall under this category, those are Mercury and Venus, since Earth comes at number three. Now, we will discuss all these inner or terrestrial planets separately and in more detail. First, Mercury. Mercury is the closest plane to Sun that lies around 0.4 AU from the Sun. It is the smallest planet in our solar system. Its masses are only 0.05% compared to Earth's mass. It does not have any natural satellites. Impact craters, lobed ridges are only known geological activities of Mercury. They are believed to be formed from a long enough period of contraction early in its life. Atmosphere of Mercury is tenuous and contains blasted atoms generated through solar winds. Its core is noticeably larger and made from iron. However, researchers have not yet managed to explain its core and thin mantle completely. It is predicted that its outer layers were destroyed by an unknown giant impact. It is also believed that overwhelming energy of young sun prevented Mercury to accrete fully. Second, Venus. 
Venus lies around 0.7 AU from the Sun. In size, it is very close to Earth. Its size is around 81% of Earth's mass. Similar to Earth, Venus possesses a thick silicate that is mantled around its core, which is made of iron. It also possesses substantial atmosphere. Evidence is found of internal geological activities on its surface. Despite of the similar size, it is noticeably drier compared to Earth. Its atmosphere is 90 times dense. There are no natural satellites orbiting Venus. There is noticeable amount of greenhouse gases in its atmosphere, making it the hottest planet of the solar system with a surface temperature of 400 Celsius. Evidences of current geological activities are not definitive. Depletion of substantial atmosphere is not prevented due to lack of the magnetic field. It clearly indicates that atmosphere of Venus is constantly replenishing by volcanic eruptions. Third, Earth. Earth is located around 1 AU from the Sun. Earth is the largest and the densest planet among inner or terrestrial planets. In entire solar system, Earth is the only planet or place to have ongoing geological activities. It is the only place where life is known to exist. Liquid hydrosphere of Earth is unique among all four terrestrial planets. It is the only planet that possesses plate tectonics. Earth has a totally different atmosphere compared to other planets having 21% of free oxygen that is certainly the main support to life. There is only one natural satellite of Earth named Moon. Our Moon is the largest natural satellite in the whole solar system. Fourth, Mars. Mars distances about 1.5 AU from the Sun. Mars is noticeably smaller than Earth and Venus. It is only 10% compared to Earth's mass. Carbon dioxide is the main component of atmosphere of Mars. It has 0.6% of Earth's surface pressure that is equal to 6.1 millibars. Surface of Mars is full of rift valleys and vast volcanoes such as Olympus, Mons and Vels Marineries. It is predicted that life existed on the Mars with complete biological activities around 2 million years ago. Its soil is full of iron oxide or simply rust which gives its identical red colour. Deimos and Phobos are two tiny natural satellites of Mars that are possibly formed of rocky asteroids grouping. Asteroid Belt Asteroids fall under category of small solar system bodies ignoring to large seers. Refractory rocky and metallic minerals are main components in their structure. Icy elements are also present in their bodies sometimes. They hold a wide range of size starting from a few meters and extending up to hundreds of kilometers. According to arbitrary definitions, grain-sized asteroids are known as micrometeoroids. Those in the size of meters are known as meteoroids. Asteroid belt is located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. They are located around 2.3 to 3.3 AU from the Sun. Asteroids are possibly those objects that fail to form a planet during the formation of solar system due to gravitational effects of Jupiter. The asteroid belt is spread over kilometers of diameter, including millions of asteroids. However, the total mass of asteroid belt object is one thousandth time of Earth mass. Too tiny, isn't it? The asteroid belt is massively populated. Spacecrafts manage to pass through it without facing any uncertain incident. Ceres Ceres is the largest known asteroid. As a space object, it is also considered a protoplanet and a dwarf planet too. Diameter of Ceres is somewhere under 1,000 km. It holds sufficient mass that provides it its own gravity in order to pull it in a spherical shape. Ceres was discovered into 1801 as a planet. Later on, it was put in the class of asteroids after 50 years in 1850s after a long enough debate. Discovery of additional asteroids forces this move. Ceres become the first discovered asteroid in that sense. In 2006, a proper definition for dwarf planets was formed. Thus, Ceres was put in the category of dwarf planet too. 
Asteroid groups. According to orbital characteristics of asteroids, they are divided into asteroid groups and families. Asteroids that orbit larger asteroids are referred as asteroid moons. However, they are not clearly referred as planetary moons since some asteroid moons are as large as their parent asteroid. Main belt comets are also there in asteroid belt. Main belt comets are possibly the source for water located on the Earth. At L4 and L5 points of Jupiter, Jupiter trojans are located. These are gravitational stable regions. They lead and trail a planet in its orbit. Other small bodies in any other planetary or satellite Lagrange point are also referred as trojans. Hilda asteroids are located in a 2 or 3 resonance with gas giant Jupiter. In every second orbit of Jupiter, they go around the Sun three times. Near-Earth asteroids are also a part of inner solar system. Orbits of inner planets are crossed by many of these near-Earth asteroids. Most of them are proved to be potentially hazardous objects. Chapter 5 Outer Solar System Outer region of solar system contains four outer giant planets and their giant moons. Centaurs and short-period comets are also a part of outer solar system. Outer solar system contains solid objects with higher proportion of volatiles such as water, ammonia and methane due to their greater distance from sun. These elements have a noticeable higher melting point compared to objects in inner solar system. It is because lower temperature allows these elements to remain solid. Outer planets the four planets are also referred as giant planets or Jovian planets. Together, these four planets encompass around 99% of the mass that orbit around the Sun. Jupiter and Saturn together encompass 400 times the mass of Earth. These two planets are referred as gas giants and primarily made of overwhelming hydrogen and helium. Remaining two, Neptune and Uranus, formed of ice elements. These planets are formed of ice elements. These planets are less massive compared to Jupiter and Saturn. They encompass less than 20 times of mass than Earth's. Neptune and Uranus are known as ice giants. All of the outer planets have rings. Only Saturn's ring is thick enough to observe from Earth. There is a category named superior planets that includes planets beyond the orbit of Earth. Thus, this category contains both inner and outer planets. Now let us continue to discuss each outer planet individually and descriptively. First, Jupiter is located about 5.2 AU from Sun. It is 318 times of Earth's mass and 2.5 times of the mass all other planets together. It is mainly made of hydrogen and helium. Semi-permanent features in its atmosphere are formed due to its internal heat. Cloud bands and great red spot are great example of them. There are 67 known moons of Jupiter. Ganymede, Callisto, Io and Europa are largest of them. All these four moons possess similar characteristics to terrestrial planets, such as volcanism, internal heating, etc. Ganymede is the largest natural satellite in the whole solar system. It is even larger than Mercury. Second, Saturn. Saturn is about 9.5 AU from Sun. It has most visible ring. It is very similar to Jupiter in atmospheric composition and magnetosphere. Saturn has 60% mass of Jupiter's mass. It encompasses 95 Earth masses. It is the only planet that has less density than water. Small ices and rock particles are there in the ring of Saturn. There are 62 known moons of Saturn. Most of them are formed with icy materials. Titan and Enecladus are two of them on which noticeable geological activities were discovered. Titan is the second largest moon of our solar system. It is larger than Mercury and also the only moon with substantial atmosphere. 3. Uranus Uranus holds around 14 times Earth masses located around 19 AU from Sun. It is the lightest planet among outer planets. It uniquely orbits Sun on its side. Moreover, its axis tilts about 90 degrees to the ecliptic. 
wall of Uranus is comparatively colder and does not radiate any noticeable amount of heat in space. It has 27 confirmed satellites. Following are largest moons of Uranus. Titania, Oberon, Umbriel, Ariel and Miranda. Fourth, Neptune. Neptune is a slightly smaller planet compared to Uranus, located around 30 AU from Sun. Its mass is equivalent to 17 Earths. It is comparatively dense than Uranus. It radiates more heat than Uranus, however, not as much as Jupiter and Saturn. There are 14 known moons in total, Triton being largest among them. Triton is a geologically active moon with presence of gaseous and liquid nitrogen. It is the only moon having retrograde orbit. There are many Neptune trojans accompanying Neptune in its orbit. Centaurs Centaurs are icy comet-like bodies. Their orbits possess semi-major axes. Their axes are greater than Jupiter and Neptune's axes. 10,199 Chariklo is the largest known centaur. It has a diameter of 250 kilometers. 2060 Chiron was the first ever centaur discovered. However, it is also considered as comet since it grows a coma just like comets do when they pass close by sun. In the category of comets, it is referred as 95P. Chapter 6 Comets and Trans-Neptunian Region Comets Small solar system bodies that lie across few kilometres across are usually referred as comets. These bodies are usually made of volatile ices. Most of them have highly eccentric orbits. These orbits are generally perihelion within the orbits of inner planets. Comet orbits that are far beyond Pluto are usually aphelion. A coma is developed when a comet enters inner solar system. That coma is a result of icy surface of comet being sublimate and ionizes due to proximity to the Sun. It is a long tail formed by radiated gases and dust. It is often visible to naked eyes, too. Short-period comets have orbits that last less than 200 years. Long-period comets have orbits that can last more than a thousand years. Most of the short-period comets come from Kuiper Belt. Oort Cloud is home for most of the long-period comets. There exist many groups of comets moving together that were formed as a result of breaking down a single parent. Determining the accurate orbit for certain comets is impossible since some hyperbolic comets have orbits outside the solar system. Some very old comets lose their volatiles due to sun heat and end up falling in the category of asteroids since they no longer possess a coma. Trans-Neptunian Region The area that lies behind the orbit of Neptune is known as Trans-Neptunian Region. It includes donut-shaped Kuiper Belt, Pluto and other dwarf planets, etc. There is also located a tilted disk of scattered objects. It is spread much further compared to Kuiper Belt. The entire region cannot be explored yet. It is predicted that this region holds many small worlds and some of them are even larger, multiple times, than Earth. Those are mainly composed with rocks and ice. This region is often referred as third zone of solar system that lies beyond inner and outer solar system. Conclusion With this, this short book comes to its end. Universe cannot be encompassed within this short book. However, most of the important concepts such as planetary system, sun, comets and moons have been covered properly. One who wants to study more deeply can refer to other descriptive books since solar system is a popular field and there are many books available about it. However, before jumping right into the deep concepts, it is important to cover basic knowledge to avoid troubles. Finally, it is hoped that this book will help you a lot understanding basic concepts related to vast theory of solar system and ultimately the universe. Even subject of universe and space begins with our own solar system. This book will help a lot to those related with astronomic fields of study.